I'm Butch Curry from Zombie Nirvana Games. Welcome back to Fantasy Cartography with Adobe Photoshop, the podcast where I share my favorite tips, tricks, and techniques to help you make cool maps for your role-playing games. After a regrettably long hiatus, I'm finally able to make some time to get back to recording some new episodes. As you might have noticed, my usual Photoshop 7 screen has been replaced with a spiffy CS3 version. My family is still in the process of moving, so the PC I normally record on is packed away. I'm using my laptop instead, which only has CS3 installed. But don't worry, I developed all these techniques using version 7, so even if you're not using the very latest copy of Photoshop, you shouldn't have any trouble duplicating them. For the next few episodes, rather than work on a specific map, I'm going to cover some different basic techniques that you can use in a lot of different ways. Once I get things settled down, we'll get back to our regularly scheduled program. Now let's get started. I get a lot of folks asking how to go about using some of these techniques if they don't have a graphics tablet. To show you what I mean, I'm going to zoom in here on this map. Uh, this is just one I'm working on for a map pack that I'm releasing next week. And if you look in close here, you can see that these hills have these little ridge lines around them that start off thick and end up thin. And you might think that the only way to create those would be with a drawing tablet, like a Wacom. But actually, I created all of these just using a mouse. It's a really easy technique. Let me show you how it works. I'm just going to close this. Make a new document. Just going to use the default Photoshop size. And the real trick is just uh, how you set up the brush. So I'm going to switch to my brush tool. I'm going to blow it up just a bit so you can get a better picture of it. I'm going to bring up the brush palette. All you really have to do is go into the shape dynamics and just go into the control under size jitter and change that from pen pressure to fade. Just like that. And you can start to see down here in the preview exactly how that's going to work. If you change the number of steps for the fade, you'll change how long the stroke will be. Try 30, 40. You can just move this up and down until you get it looking just like you want. Just like that. We'll close this out and show you how that looks. Just like that, just with the mouse, you can create those kind of ridge lines. These are very nice and uniform looking. If you want to give them just a little bit more wiggle, you can just go into your brushes again and give it just a little bit of scattering. It doesn't take much, only about 10% or so. And that just gives it a little bit more of a hand-drawn, shaky look. Just like that. Now, if you want to automate this even more, there's a really easy way to do it. We're going to create a new document. This time we're going to make it one inch by one inch. Uh, we're going to push the resolution up to about 300. Now using this same brush that I just used, I'm going to make a single stroke just down like that. And now I'm going to turn this stroke into a brush. I'm just going to come up here to edit. Uh, if I was using the older version of Photoshop, I'd select create new brush. But here in CS3, it's define brush preset. It's the same thing though. And just hit OK. Now I can close this. I don't need any more. Coming back to here, I'm going to shrink this brush down just a bit there. And I need to go into the brush settings again. Now I'm going to go to brush tip shape. Increase the spacing quite a bit, just till it looks good, right about there. And I want to go into the shape dynamics. Turn off the fade control there, but I want to set the angle jitter here to direction. And now you can see that if we stroke, it changes the direction uh, based on which way the mouse is going. Now this is kind of hard to control just with the regular mouse. Another way to do it, shrink that brush down just a bit more, is to use the pen tool. So if we imagine we've got a hill here, we just stroke out a line around it, like that. 
come over here to the paths palette turn on our brush tool again because we want to have that brush tool on when we use this and then just click on the stroke path with brush and you can see that that has put those ridge lines in around that path of course if you don't like how that looks there you can always just undo as you've seen me do before you can edit your path however you want and restroke it just like that and right there is a very easy way to put in a lot of ridge lines very quickly all without ever having to use a graphics tablet one thing to keep in mind when you're using this technique though is that the angle jitter on the brush is set to direction let me just clear this out just to show you what I mean I'm going to grab the pen tool again. I'm going to draw a line going this way and a line going this way. Back here to the pads palette. Make sure I have my brush selected. Hit stroke path. And as you can see, when the path is drawn one direction, the thick end of the uh, little ridge line is going up. When it goes to the other direction, the thick end is going down. So even I still, all the time, will draw a path in the wrong direction. Uh, the ridge lines go the wrong way, and I have to back up and do it over again. I'm gonna just undo that stroke and just show you one more little trick that you can do. You can go in here to your brushes palette again and you can tweak this a little more just to make it even a little more interesting looking. If you just go in and give it a little bit of angle jitter, it doesn't take much, only about maybe two or three percent, give it a bit of roundness jitter. We'll change the size of those strokes and a little bit of the size jitter too. We'll change the width of the strokes and make some a little closer together than others. Just like that, you can make a lot more interesting lines rather than the really super uniform ones we had before. So now if I close this out and stroke the path again, we just click away from that work path, and you can see that's created a lot more interesting ridge lines there than the ones we had before. That's going to do it for this episode. Next time we'll look at some other technique. I haven't decided what that's going to be yet. You'll know as soon as I do. Don't forget to stop by ZombieNirvana.com to check out this week's show notes. And for information on my still upcoming book, Fantasy Cartography with Adobe Photoshop. Thanks for listening, and happy mapping! Will you go, will you go?